Now, beer were one and eight pence a pint in them days, and there were 240 pence to the pound. So that makes it that you could go out all weekend on a pound, which no doubt you can't do today. <laughs> <laughs> When we applied for the funding to investigate the demise of public houses in the area of Batley and Burstall, little did we realise the true extent of their decline. Statistics reveal that 18 pubs per week continue to close in the UK, and pressure is being placed on the government to abandon upcoming increases to the tax paid by pubs. The sleepy village of Bursal is well known for being the birthplace of Joseph Priestley, the man who discovered oxygen, and also Charlotte Bronte, who based the manor house Fieldhead in her novel Shirley from nearby Oakwell Hall. Our film starts here at the Black Bull on Kergate. This pub is a Grade 2 listed building and one of the oldest buildings in Bursal and was once used as a local courthouse. Here in the beer garden we meet two of our members, David Stead and Megan James, who have carried out an in-depth survey of regulars in the five remaining pubs. Right, from my findings or talking to people, I've found that customers are able to buy cheap beer and wine from supermarkets, the big chains are able to buy alcohol in large quantities and then they can sell it cheaper, uh, pubs are charging landlords far too much rent, unable to make a decent living out of this. Also, there's an insufficient real ale choice, which I've heard from one or two people, and the younger generation don't really want to go for the pub culture, they prefer wine bars. This is a survey from the Greyhound. Supermarkets selling cheap beer all day and night, plus winter months with no smoking, pubs are quieter. A customer who goes in the Horse and Jockey in Burstall said that local pubs used to be the hub of the community which they are not anymore. This is a comment from somebody at the Black Bull at Burstall. The younger generation prefer to go out in areas where there are special offers and meet people of their own age. A comment made by a customer in the Horse and Jockey said that uh, people can be put off by unsociable landlords and landladies and also if their staff aren't very friendly either. This is a comment from a customer at the Greyhound. They've said breweries are too greedy on rent, cheap supermarket drinks, the only ones to survive do food, and most pubs are run with faceless staff rather than the owner and family. Well, what I remember about my first days of drinking was in the 19, back end of the 1940s. Where I did drink before I was 18, but we won't go into that. I'm talking about when I was 18, which was the back end of the 40s. And the pubs itself, if you go in today, they're all right, you can have a chat and everything. Uh, there's a pub quizzes on and this, that and the other. But they're not like the old days, when there were three-piece bands and pianists on. And the pianist would say, take requests and it play anything you wanted. And uh, I think they made the pubs in, in them days, like, you know. All that's gone forever. 1953, that's the year we got married. And somebody heard that to play the piano. And Joe Foley, he was president of Buckley Irish Nash Club. And he came to see me to ask me if I'd play the piano at Buckley Nash. So I did do, I went to play the piano at Batley Nash. Then somebody came then from Albion Pub, uh, that's in Perwell, I think, I think it's closed down now, that pub, if I'd go to play the piano there. So I went to play the piano there. And then somebody else came then from Nottingham Wells Pub, it's, not, it's, it's called, what's it called now? Uh, Legends. Legends, right. So I went to play the piano at Nottingham Wells Club. And then John Barnes, that was the steward at Batley IDL Club, he got a pub in Morley, I think they call it Commercial in Morley, as you just go through. And so I went to play the piano there, <laughs> and, uh, on a Saturday night, I think it was Saturday night. And so pubs were full then, uh, that's all I remember about pubs, and I started doing clubs then. Another of the five remaining pubs in Burstall is the Scotland Inn along Bradford Road where Megan and David carried out their survey, as well as at the other three. 
the greyhound, the horse and jockey, and the old wine and spirits vault. The general feeling in all the pubs seems to be that the owners are imposing high rental charges to the landlords or the new tenants, and this in turn of course increases bar prices. The amount of duty on alcohol doesn't help either. We're open from 12 o'clock till close, seven days a week. Um, our food we do from Wednesday to Saturday, five till nine, and on a Sunday it's 12 till five. We, we want it to, to succeed, we want it to stay open um, and we keep trying different things to pull people in. The food, we've changed the menu on the food, we're doing the stone baked pizzas which have gone down really well and the burgers and we've seen an increase in our food line uh, since we started doing these pizzas and the burgers and we changed the menu all together and it's made a big difference. There's too much uh, social media today. I I went out only the other day with one of my sons for a meal and a drink, and I don't see him every day of the week. I only see him now and then. And he spent all night on his iPhone. Now who wants to go out uh, sit opposite somebody that's on the iPhone all the day? But he's not the only one. You look round the pub and everybody else is. Attitudes have changed now. Uh, like in 1947, Dewsbury Empire closed, and that closed because of television. And I think it's the same now with pubs that can get cheap drinks at uh, supermarkets, mm. that can get DVDs, and so they prefer to stay at home. And then smoking ban, which, which came in then, uh, I think that affected a lot of pubs and, and, ch and cheap beer from supermarkets. I think the trouble for pubs started whenever it was, 20 or 30 years ago, when the number of pubs that a brewer, brewer could own was restricted. Because then what happened was that uh, they had to get rid of a load of pubs. The venture capitalists moved in and they're not really interested in providing a service. Uh, all they want is the money coming in. In fact, I asked one of the regional managers from the capitalists that own this place once. Well, I didn't ask him anything. I made the comment that they haven't a clue about customer service or being in the retail market, which what is the pub is a retailer. And he said, no, we haven't, but we expect our tenants and landlord, uh, managers to have that skill, which to me just ex just exposes them to, what, to be what they are really. No, they just they just like to see people get in, and they want you to work for them, for that you know to give them their percentage. They don't make anything easy. Um, if you wanted to buy out of like your wines and spirits, um, you're talking thousand, two thousand pound per year to buy out of it, so that you can go and buy your own. Um, they've they've just got you everywhere. It's how it is, isn't it? You're paying the rent to them. You're buying your beer off them. It's everything. It doesn't help when you've got your supermarkets that are selling beers, boxes of beers, um, half the price of what you sell, you know, that you buy in a pub. People just go out and buy the beer, they, they take it home. And like you said earlier on, they, you know, get a takeaway for the price of coming out in, on a night time. So if they put the supermarket prices up and, they, and lowered our, you know, lowered the price of the beer, that we have to buy, we could lower our prices and you get more people coming in. Once again, the biggest thing is social media. People can get anything they want on social media now, music, entertainment, information. Uh, they can even get football matches on. When the football matches for cup final were a big thing, we, hadn't, we couldn't afford a television. We used to go to the pub and watch it in black and white. Now, they can sit at home in the room, pick any sports games, golf, anything they want, and they can get it there on, on their iPhones. So that's one thing. But on the other, we've been, they've been, the working man has been priced out of it because where I could go in seven days a week, I don't know how, but I could afford it. Now I couldn't afford to go two or three nights a week. 
because it's just gone over through the roof as the price of beer and anything you drink like, you know. And another thing which a lot of people won't agree with, but the non-smoking. I know for a fact that a lot of people stopped going to pubs because they couldn't have a smoke. Because they do it on the internet, don't they? On right. Facebook. They talk to another on, one another on Facebook. And I think that that could be. They don't seem to want to... Except for young people, they, they, they go up to pubs and uh, clubs. But I asked, asked my grandchildren why they go to Leeds and Wakefield, and they said because pubs in Batley, there's no atmosphere. So they go to pubs in Wakefield and, uh, and, and Leeds. So I don't know what they mean by atmosphere. I mean, we have a bit of banter. Deborah and I um, say things to each other occasionally that we wouldn't want other people to <laughs> yeah, but it's all banter, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of the staff are the same. Yeah. I think the pubs, that's, that's um, going well, doing well. They're putting meals on. Yeah. And that's the only time I go to a pub now if somebody says well, we're going out for a meal like you want to come. And that's when you go to the... They've got to put meals on, I think, to get people in. Mm. Otherwise, I don't think they'll, they'll just go into... Uh, just for a drink like they used to. It just costs you so much now to go out and socialise. Mm -hmm. Whereas the supermarkets encourage you to buy the beers and go home and just sit at home. I mean, we, when we were out at caretaker at St Mary's, we used to go to Albion, because that was, that was near this pub. We used to go in there for a drink. And then, and then all the houses went. If, if houses go, pubs go. Mm -hmm. If there's nobody to go to these, like Cross Bank were full of houses, weren't there? You yes. know, streets and streets. So they go to Albion. Then they changed the name then to Barfield. They did. Yes, changed it to Barfield. But nobody yeah. were going, and now, it's, now they're flat. If you put in meals on, you'll get people going for a for a meal and using and, and using pub then. But otherwise, I, I can't see them. I can't see them surviving. Which proves that, doesn't it? With number of pubs that's closed. Whether that's they, well, I don't think I don't think a pianist should bring them back into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Following the survey of more than 100 pub customers and listening to the interviews today. Are we any nearer to revealing why the decline is so consistent and rapid? In 2014, weekly pub closures peaked at 29 per week and has now slowed to around 18 every week in the UK. The simple answer is not enough people are spending their time in what used to be the hub of the communities. Whether it's the price of drinks, the smoking ban, drink drive figures or simply changes in social habits, We'll never precisely know the answer. But the five pubs left open here have weathered the storm and are doing their best to adapt and continue to secure a great future in Burstall. <laughs>